Hello everyone and welcome back to Will A Wonderful World for episode 5. Ooh, we made it to episode 5. Fucking hell yes, this series is getting somewhere. At least in length, not necessarily in popularity, but that's not what matters. I want to keep doing this series. This game is amazing. It's getting so convoluted and, and I don't know why. But the stories are just touching to me. Even if I can't relate to them. Like I've never been in the sort of situation with Chang or Carlos with the missing sister. Or like I said, Chang with the with a couple that are trying to die. But it still affects me and it tugs at my heartstrings. And it's amazing and I love it. I may start sitting down for longer play sessions. Maybe an hour, maybe a little bit longer. Make the videos extended so there'll be less parts. And then you guys can sit down and just relax and watch watch one long video. No ads, you don't have to click on to the next video. Now I am recording this episode in succession from the last episode. So any comments I haven't seen yet, of course, because I haven't even uploaded these videos yet. I'm going to go ahead and get right back on into this because I'm really interested in how things are going to change for Chang and Carlos with these other two letters that are seemingly not related, but somehow there's some sort of butterfly effect shit going on. I don't know. It's crazy. It seems confusing, but I dig it. I like it. It's making me think. I don't know what the fuck's going on, but I want to figure it out. Let's go. Heavenly Father's guidance right now. Let's do this. Oh. Okay. It's, it's, it's his sister. It's Alicia. My name is Alicia. I'm 18 years old. I was born and raised in Mexico. I have a younger brother named Carlos who is nine years younger than me. He is the only family I have left. We're both orphans. The orphanage was so poor that they couldn't afford to send us to school. I had to come out and make some money so that I could keep my brother in school. If I could make enough money, maybe we could eventually move out of the orphanage and start a new life, just the two of us. I heard that America was a place full of chances for everyone. That was where I should go then. I mean, it kind of is, but at the same time, it's also a place where lots and lots of dreams go to die. Anyways, <laughs> a travel agency inside Mexico City had told me that crossing the desert, stowing away on a train, or getting across the Rio Bravo were all very risky and dangerous. Therefore, they had established a route via the ocean. Even though it would be slightly more expensive, it was guaranteed to be safe, and everyone who had taken this route had gotten into America. I spent the money I had saved for months and bought myself a ship ticket. There were several other young girls with me on the ship. We were locked inside a small room and were not allowed to go out. At first, we thought that it was just so that people wouldn't find us being smuggled across the border. But it had taken so long, we must have arrived by- Oh my god, it better not be like a, a fucking slave trade shit going on or something here. That's- Whoa. Half a month- Wow. Wow. We were finally certain that we had been conned. After about a month, the ship finally arrived at a port. What the hell? Take some- Where the fuck did they go and why did they go so slow? We were then moved to a building near the airport where guards watched us. Where were we now? Which country was this? Were we going to be sold? As slaves? I fucking knew it, dude. I knew it. Or pros- Oh, gosh. I crouched in the corner with my mind, running wild. Every once in a while, a guard would come in and take a sobbing girl out. There were fewer and fewer people left in the room. Finally, there was only me and another girl named Julie left. Julie suddenly stood up and tried to hit the guard at the door facing us. She was holding a rock in her hand. But she didn't succeed. The rock fell to the ground and her arm was grabbed so tightly by the guard that it looked like it was about to snap. She looked at me with a pleading look in her eyes. I really wanted to help her. I, I didn't want to be sold either. I was too scared. The guard had a gun and everyone outside had a gun. Julie lowered her head. Whoa. When she lifted it back up, the guard was screaming like a pig being slaughtered. 
Half of his missing ear was in Jewel. Oh my gosh! She bit his fucking ear off! Then I heard a few gunshots, along with loud cursing. Julie fell down and stopped moving. Her eyes were open so wide, as if she had just come out of a nightmare. The injured guard slammed the door angrily, with one hand covering his ear. Soon, another person came in. This one seemed to be nicer. He had half a bottle of beer with him. He sat down at the door, looked at me, and then looked at Julie, who was lying in her own blood. He didn't seem to care about what had happened at all. An hour later, his bottle was empty, and he had fallen asleep in the chair. He was pretty late. Maybe I wouldn't be taken away until tomorrow. I looked at Julie again and remembered what she had told me there, on the ocean. I want to become a singer in America. I want to be a star. She wasn't bragging. She had a really beautiful voice. She also... She had also said, I know if I do my best, my dream will come true. I would never forget the look on her face when she said it. Her eyes had been filled with hope and anticipation for the future. I was very jealous of the how lively. What? That was worded weird. I was very jealous of how lively and full of joy Julie was. The guard turned a little in, in the chair and his gun dropped from his waist, sliding towards my feet. Was it a hint from the Lord? I, I mean, I didn't do anything. And I'm, I'm assuming my, my god dog didn't do anything either. I reached out for the gun, but I jerked my hand back like I had been shocked when I touched it. No. No. I, I couldn't. What if I ended up like Julie? I held the cross tight in front of my chest and started praying. O oh, Heavenly Father, Jesus said, Ask, and you shall receive. We trust that you know what our true needs are. You recognize what our true feelings are. You understand what situations we are in. Now we shall ask for what our heart truly desires. O oh, God, give heed to my prayer. Show us your mercy. Amen. Five minutes passed. Ten minutes passed. Thirty minutes passed. The guard began snoring. The gun was right next to my hand. Maybe this really had been a hint from the Lord. I finally picked up the gun in hesitation. It felt so heavy in my hand. Mom, Dad, please bless me. Carlos, please bless me. Heavenly Father, please bless me. I pushed the door open. There was no one in the hallway outside. It was so quiet. The only thing I could hear was my own heart beating wildly in my chest. The building had only one floor. After taking one turn, I could see the main gate. There were several guards at the gate too. All of them had guns. There was a black man and two Asians. The rest of them all had pale skin. How could I get out with just one handgun? I checked the gun in my hand once again. There were no bullets in the gun. I mean, you could play the bluff game. That's always worth a shot. There were... No bullets? I collapsed on the floor. I was not feeling afraid anymore. I just felt utter desperation. Soon the guards noticed me and dragged me back into the room. This time, they cuffed up my feet so that I wouldn't be able to escape again. Julie's body was still lying there. Flies began hovering around her face. But they didn't seem to have any intention to clean up the scene. Wow. This is... Some fucked shit. Would I end up like Julie? Was this my final destiny? Heavenly Father, please answer me. Alicia. I, I don't even have anything else to say on that. But here we go, we came back, yeah. Yay, yeah, let's do this. My name is King Bakya, I'm a cop. I'd been doing this for seven years. 
maybe eight? I can't really remember. Today, the old man assigned another newbie to my unit. He had always wanted my unit to become as big as Unit 1. Why did I need so many people? Detective work wasn't like street fighting. I had a headache whenever I pictured the image of so many people in the unit passing their lunches over their heads during lunch break. And this newbie today was full of that kind of fighting for justice crap. Lunatic. Well, screw it. Whatever. I was just going to wait for a few days. Then I would find an excuse to send him over to Unit 1. Everybody would be happy then. We were always very busy. The files for the open cases had been stacking up like small hills. Among all the police precincts in the entire Republic of Korea, Busan might be one of the top five busiest precincts thanks to the... God damn, my mouse was in the way. Thanks to the violent gangs in this area. The Musun Gang and the Bungmon Gang. These two gangs never made our lives easy. I, I can't pronounce those correctly. The biggest violent gang in the Busan region. It mostly deals with drugs and arms trafficking. There are four groups within the gang. The Taesang group, the Yusong group, the, the Gangmon group, and the Inwu group. Their boss's most famous saying was, as long as you're still breathing, you gotta do what you wanna do. You gotta do what you wanna do? Or you gotta do what you gotta do. I, I, this game might not be made by someone who speaks English mainly. I'm honestly not sure. I just know that there are some gra grammatical errors in this. And the Bungmon Gang is the only other major gang that is able to rival the Musun Gang in the Busan region. Its business encompasses prostitution, entertainment, and gambling. Unlike the Musun Gang, the Bungmon <laughs> Gang is less violence prone and puts more emphasis on intelligence. One of their boss's most famous sayings is, as long as it pays, you gotta do what you gotta do. Well, they're, so, they're very, almost kind of similar. <laughs> Recently, the old boss of the Muslim gang had been severely ill. His underlings were all itching to become the successor. There were at least a dozen people killed in the infighting every day. If I kept saving up my vacation days like this, I would probably have enough time to plan for my next trip to be to the moon. You'd be getting quite a bit of money if, if you were able to do that. The case today was an annoying one, too. It was a hostage case, but the kidnapper and the hostages belonged to the same gang. It was a so-called family matter. What was worse was that the kidnapper was someone quite important to the Muslim gang. The old man always told us to keep things easy so as to avoid a direct confrontation with the gangs. He had told me again today, multiple times, to bring the kidnapper in without hurting anyone. Without hurting anyone? If he had really wanted that, he would not have assigned the case to me. I was crawling in a narrow air vent duct. Ooh, he's a real agent. I could hear breathing sounds all around me, both loud and quiet, as well as the sound of the fans. The air smelled disgusting. I pulled my collar loose a little bit. Fuck this. I'd rather climb up from the outside of the building with my bare hands than suffocate inside this goddamn tube. Why couldn't I just walk in from the door and pop two shots into his head? I'd finally arrived at the top of the room. The voices coming from below sounded very weird through the vent. You... you... S stay there and... and d d don't fucking move. All of you, don't... move. The target was sitting on a couch at the other end of the room. He kept waving the gun in his hand around and pointed it at the other one's heads every once in a while. Those poor bastards were all his underlings. None of them even dared to look up. I had seen lots of junkies that would get so high that they wouldn't recognize their own mother. Still, the scene right below me was so unusually funny that I almost chuckled. The area below the vent was right in the view of the bay window. Anyone could easily see inside the room from across the street through that window. My task today was to lure him over. I got closer to the vent, trying to observe the situation more closely. A loud noise came from somewhere. D don't move! I heard a man's voice. A bullet flew out without me seeing it. The nails fastening the vent register had been shattered by the bullet and it bounced off a few meters away into a corner. After a tumble and a half, I fell and smashed into the white carpet, 
along with the vent register. Five meters away, the junkie was holding his gun with a shocked expression on his face, and smoke was still coming out of the dark, shaking barrel of the gun. Near my shoulder, my shirt had been turned from its original red to another kind of red, and the colored patch kept getting larger. You've let yourself get hurt again, idiot. A voice that I couldn't be more familiar with appeared in my head once again, while also sounding like it was coming from out of this world. Is he schizo? Is he a schizo? He may be. Maybe not. I don't know. Let's continue. Oh, crap. I had come back to this room. Okay, yeah, something's... Mm, this... Okay. The room was extremely dark. There was no furniture inside except for a light bulb hanging from the center of the ceiling. A slightly shorter person walked out from a dark corner reluctantly. His hair was all messed up, and his eyes didn't even look alive. As soon as he pushed me away from underneath the light, a mysterious force dragged me into the corner, and I was swallowed by darkness. Whenever I was in danger, this guy would come out against my will. What? What? This dude's like multiple personalities or schizo or both or fucking something but at a moment like this well shit what a shitty day whoever stood under the light would have control of the body from this moment on i was no longer in command of my own body i quote unquote <laughs> managed to dodge all the flying bullets coming toward me with extreme agility and inhuman postures when I got back on my feet, I somehow had a gun in my hand. I'm just going to read it regularly because that's going to get annoying. The 13 9mm bullets in the magazine were fired like a machine gun. Each one of them went through his head. Broken eyeballs splashed all over the barely recognizable face of the junkie. Everything, wow, okay. Everything was a terrible mess. Yeah, I would assume if you just shot 13 bullets into his fucking face. The junkie had collapsed to the floor like a pile of mud, but now the gun was aimed at his henchmen that were still all tied up. Things were taking an ugly turn. One bullet, one life, no waste. But I hesitated when the gun pointed at a muscular guy with a tattooed head. The muscular guy suddenly swept me at my ankle with his leg. I lost my balance, knocked my head on a short table and pa- Wow, that turned right the fuck around for- Gang. When I woke up, I was lying in the hospital with tubes coming out all over my body. Min Jun was sitting next to me, sound asleep. Eight deaths. As per usual, I had to write 1,000 words for each death in the report, which meant I needed to write 8,000 words. Good math there, buddy. Moreover, the target this time was not just a regular punk. His father was the leader of the Gangmun group within the Muslim gang, Choi Yohan. That would mean another 4,000 words, at least. Gosh, my head hurts so bad. Sweet Jesus, give me a break, please. Wow, it was almost like I was watching an action movie. <laughs> a little, it got a little gruesome for a second there, the way he was explaining everything, but... If only I had some popcorn. Don't ruin this solemn moment by suddenly thinking about popcorn. Okay, sorry. There, there's no popcorn here, but we do have Osmanthus cakes, whatever the hell those are. Oh, that's great too. I'm not very picky. Oh, okay, they're literally just like little pastries. I just, <laughs> I just went and looked it up because I was curious if they were real or what they were. So, if I want to eat cakes while watching a movie, oh no, I mean, while working, is there any way I could do it hands-free? These letters are not like the regular letters that I can just read in front of me. I have to follow the thoughts of the writer by confirming it sentence by sentence. What? St stupid lazy girl. Although, there is indeed a way. If you want to free your hands to eat or do something else, all you need is hit A. All you need is hit A. Then the letters will enter autoplay mode. Furthermore, if you want to read it faster while you are not eating, you can activate the skip text option and the options. Afterwards, every click afterwards every click will reveal an entire line of text immediately. All of these tips have been archived inside the help menu, which will be periodically updated as we go along too. If you run into any questions, don't forget to check the information there. Hmm, I got it. 
Kong Bakia. Let's see. I don't know what I'm going to be able to switch between these two letters. These three things, that shouldn't be too hard. Um, right here. There were no bullets in the gun. So clang, he can't even, he can't even clang. So both of them are going to change. Let's see here. So she checked the gun and a bullet flies out without her even seeing it. I wonder what's going to happen. If, if this gun is referring to Kang's gun, then he's fucked. If it's referring to the, the perp, the perpetrator, then that's going to be good for Kang. But let's see what happens here. The nails fastening the vent register had been shattered by the bullet and it bounced off a few meters away into a corner. Oh, dang it, it better not be his gun. After a tumble and a half, I fell and smashed into the white carpet along with the vent register. Five meters away, the junkie was pointing his gun at me. He looked really scared and his hand was shaking. D don't, 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 don't you dare, dare move. This was serious. I dropped my gun and held my hands behind my head. Okay, maybe not. Uh, maybe I was wrong. I did as he said and sat together with the other hostages. Shit. I was going to owe Unit 3 another big favor. A bullet that had come from the door hit me in the stomach. I slowly collapsed to the ground with my back against the wall. What? I could feel the warmth slowly leaving my body. Damn it! I didn't... I didn't mean to kill her. Fuck! The last thing I saw was some people arguing at the door. They were all strangers. Tears rolled down my face. It was true what they said. The people you wanted to see the most in your last moments would be your own family. Wow. Oh, he got a rank A ending though. <sighs> okay. So, if she says... Let's see. Let's see. What can I switch around here? Holy shit, it's getting hot in my fucking apartment. Let's see if just alone. A bullet flew out. Clang. A loud noise came from... Don't move. I heard a man's voice. Let's see. Let's see what happens here. No bullets in the gun. No clang. So he doesn't even shoot at the vent. Oh, it doesn't seem like hers is going to change at all. So I think she's going to die. And... <sighs> Dang it. Where were the bullets? Wait. I had taken out the magazine yesterday while doing maintenance. I must have forgotten to bring it along earlier. Shit. I must have been too tired recently. My memory was getting really bad. Maybe in a couple of years I would have Alzheimer's disease. Now I know what that is, but if you don't, there you go. Put it up on the screen for a second there. Now we can move on. I paged Min Jun through radio that there was a change of plan and we need to fall back. I heard a loud boom coming from the air duct behind me just as I climbed out of the vent. Only later did I learn that the room with the target had an inexplicable explosion. The investigation afterwards indicated that everyone in the room had been burnt to ashes. There was no survivor. I never imagined that forgetting the magazine would turn out to have saved my life. I suppose today wasn't such a shitty day after all. That's... A bad end for him, but since n nothing happened to him, maybe that means nothing will happen to him in the other in in, in Chang's story. But damn, I don't know. I'm gonna try one more time. I'm gonna see. A bullet flew out without me seeing it. There were no bullets in the gun. I'm gonna leave that like that. Let's see. Let's see what happens now. Okay, both of their stories are gonna change. Awesome. Let's see what happens here. I accidentally knocked down a ladder that had been put against the wall. The guard in the room woke up. He stumbled into the hallway, still quite sleepy. I suddenly had an idea. Hands up! Don't make a sound or I'll shoot! I pointed the gun at his head. I knew there was no bullets, but maybe he didn't. Or maybe he had forgotten? That's, that's smart. Playing the bluff game, finally. He slowly walked towards me. He grabbed the gun with one hand and took it out of my grasp. Without any hesitation. I was kidding myself. He dragged me back into the room.
This time he cuffed up my feet so that I wouldn't be able to. Damn! Flies began hovering around her face with an incident to clean up the scene. Would I end up like Julie? Was this my final destiny? The bullet hit the vent register and ricocheted. Then it happened to hit my shoulder. What a wonderful day for me. Blood was streaming down my arm and dripping onto the vent. Then it dropped onto the carpet of the room below. Wait. What, what is this? The target's steps were getting closer. Then he stopped. I didn't need to look. The bastard must be standing right beneath the vent. Soon, he would lift his head, look up, and notice me. There was the sound of the window glass shattering. Then it was the sound of flesh being destroyed. What? What does that sound like? I, what? Mission complete. Everything went as planned. Well, almost. I stood next to the junkie's body, which was missing half of his head. Wow. Oh shit. He was supposed to just lose a leg or something. This was a little different from what the old man had demanded. Min Jun had just rushed over from the building across the street. He dropped to his knees with a thud as soon as he saw me. I I'm sorry, Lieutenant. It was my mistake. I, I missed. It looked like he hadn't forgotten the last time when he did not follow the plan exactly and had to write a 200,000 word report. If, if apologizing was good enough, what would we need the cops for then? That is true. I checked the junkie's pocket. There was only 50,000 won and half a pack of Marlboros. I stuffed the money into Min Jun's pocket and lit a cigarette for myself. Well... Choi Do Sung, which was the name of the junkie, was just trash in his society, and he deserved to die. After witnessing such a bloody event, maybe his loser buddies would learn to behave a little too. Yeah, maybe it wasn't too bad after all. I touched Min Jin's head. Don't worry about it. Well done. He got the rank S ending, but what... Okay, so what if I swap these two around for her? Will this somehow make a difference? Nope, exact same ending. I don't know what else to do here. I know things end bad for her, but maybe that's good. She didn't die. She just got put back in the room so she can't escape. Maybe, maybe we can still find her and save her. I'm assuming because things went well for Kang. Things are going to go well for Chang and Carlos help Carlos find his sister and help Chang's uh, couple that tried to kill themselves not die. Let's see. I got the S rank innings on those. Uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here. I apologize. I know I was getting ready to move on to the next letters, but uh, I'm actually running out of time for today. Anyways, I will catch you guys in the next episode. And actually, after this, I may record another game. I'm not sure yet. I haven't decided... Depends if I have enough time. Anyways, again, I'm going to catch you guys in the next episode. I hope you all have a good one. Bye-bye.